Hi there, I'm Meg Fur, and a couple of weeks ago I did a video on this thing behind me, which I called my, quote, perfect pulse multiplier, because it's one wide tileable, it runs at uh, four game ticks, so it outputs pulses every two redstone ticks, and when you put items into the droppers on the right hand side of the screen there, um, it will output exactly the number of pulses as you put in items. So if you put in 25 items, it'll give out 25 pulses. Put in one item, it'll give out one pulse. And I set out a bit of a challenge at the time. Frankly, it's not super compact, but I think it's a, well, it's certainly as good as I can get it. And I'd be really interested to see if anyone comes up with a better idea. So there's a bit of a challenge for you guys. And so I was really, really pleased when one of my viewers, Ligoncore, contacted me and said, I've come up with something smaller. And uh, I was really excited to see that. So that's what we're gonna look at today. Okay, so let's dive straight in. And so here it is, and uh, it's a fantastic piece of engineering. It's nine wide by six high. That's as opposed to mine, which was six high by about 12 wide. And uh, it's got you know a bit of obsidian sticks out here, whereas mine had a whole clock that sits out the side. And uh, what's really interesting, actually, is that uh, I think Ligon Core has taken a few things from, from my uh, design. So... This back end bit looks quite a lot like my back end here. I've got um, the the block swapper with the droppers here, and this one tick pulse limiter to start it off. And we've got the same thing around here. So, uh, but what he's managed to do, what's really clever, is he's managed to build in this clock. And this might not look like a clock to you, uh, so we'll have a quick look at that as well. But this clock is something I used in this previous design of mine. But it's using two pistons so it's this one here and that is a clock that runs at four game ticks that gives out an output every two redstone ticks and you can control it in a special way so here's the example it's running away it's clocking if i press a button here and give it a long signal then it stops clocking it turns off basically and this is actually an rs nor latch and in rs nor latch you have two inputs and if you press one the signal swaps over, you press it again, nothing happens. So it's different to a T flip flop. And then I can press this one again to switch it over. But the interesting thing is with this is if I give it a one tick pulse with an observer, like so, then it starts clocking again. So I've basically got a controllable clock. And that is what Ligon Core has used uh, just here. And he's managed to make it a lot more compact than I did in my previous build. Um, so, you know, Great work, Ligon Core. Uh, it's really, really good. Now, in the title, I've called this the almost perfect pulse multiplier. And the reason it's almost perfect, as opposed to uh, my quotes, perfect one over here, is that it has one tiny little piece where it doesn't quite fit the brief that I gave. And that is that when you load this with um, either one or two items, Make sure I've got something in there. So I've got no pumpkins in my inventory at the moment. But let me move something out of the way. And I press a button. What actually happens is I will get three pumpkins. And the same happens if you have two in here and kick it off. Let's see how many pumpkins I get. I get three again. With anything more than three pumpkins in here, let's take two, five then it is indeed perfect. There we go, we've got exactly five. So what that means is that this is perfect as long as you don't want one or two items from a particular slice. And to be honest, you know, and I spoke to Lion Core about this, it's, it's really easy to create a slice which just does one or two outputs. So this one is completely tileable, but what I'll do is I'll show you a couple of tiles as well, which will add on uh, to the side of this, which will do one or two uh, outputs. Okay, before we go and look at the slices for one or two outputs, let's go and build a second one of these. Okay, so I'm going to start down here with a trapdoor and an observer looking at that trapdoor. That goes into a block. Then we've got a slightly tricky bit, which I need to place another piston facing this way, and that could be an ordinary piston. And that could never extend because of the obsidian. So I need one obsidian for this whole row. 
don't need that. And we're going to create our clock. So I place a block above there, a torch here and here. And you'll see immediately that starts clocking. Okay, so I'm going to use a button to um, turn the clock off. There we go. All right. So now um, I'm going to place another sticky piston just here. I want a dropper facing towards me on that one. And above that, I'm going to place another dropper facing downwards. And then place your obsidian. So we want one here and one there. And that obsidian makes sure that these can't get pushed out of the way when we place our next torch here. So this torch would normally extend this piston, but it can't because the obsidian's in the way. Another torch there. A block on top. And then over here, sorry, does I say block on top? A, a sticky piston on top. A sticky piston pointing down here on the back. And that has our observer on it facing back towards the back of the build. So the front is this side. Okay, and this gives a one tick pulse into here, and that allows this block stop swapper to work. So if I do that, you can see the two droppers get swapped over. So again, we get swapped back. Now, there's one bit which is um, confused me when I first saw this, and uh, then I realized exactly why it was there and um, how clever it was. You need a block just here, and it feels like that's going to cause this to get powered by uh, this torch, and indeed it does, but that's what's supposed to happen because otherwise, when the clock is running, this will be powering this top dropper and moving items into the bottom, but it will also be powering the bottom dropper and that try and move items back up. So that'd be uh, a bit rubbish. So what this torch does is it powers that top, that bottom dropper permanently and makes sure that uh, items can only flow downwards into it and not go back up again because of this clock. So yeah, I thought that was really cool. Right, let's move back over here. A block on top of the trapdoor. I'm gonna put a two tick repeater and it's on two ticks for the reason we discussed earlier, which is if you give a longer pulse into this clock, it turns it off. So this trapdoor will um, power this observer, power this block, which will give a one tick pulse into here, turn the clock on. This um, repeater will give a two tick pulse, which will turn it off. Okay, so another sticky piston just here with an observer powering back towards that repeater. So when this extends, it'll power this and it'll give that one tick pulse into here starting the clock. When it goes back up, it'll give a two tick pulse stopping the clock. And, um, and this is really clever. It's a really, really neat way of doing it and um, much neater than what I've managed to do. So yeah, again, well done like a core. And the clock signal is actually sent back up through this block up to here with another block on top and a torch here, which is going to be our output. Um, but we still need a comparator here. That comparator will be reading this dropper into a block here and uh, a torch on the end of this piston, which will be watched by this observer. So this bit of a circuit is all about making sure that we don't output too many pulses because normally uh, the clock will keep running for a little bit extra time after um, the dropper is empty and that gives you too many pulses on the output. You end up typically with two pulses more than the number of items you use. So this circuit at the top here is designed to stop that. So we have a repeater on four ticks here, another block just there with a repeater on four ticks and we have an observer going between them like so and the only other thing i'm going to say is that if you wanted to be able to do a double speed output where say you got one stack of items in your dropper and you want to be able to output two stack of items that might be useful for a shop where you're, you're selling a lot of items in one go you want this to work as fast as possible you can put a block here with a dropper just here and another dropper just here 
and they will both output items. So with one stack in here, you end up with two stacks coming out of here. Okay, so I'm going to build mine like that. And I think that should be it. Let's give it a test. Right, so I'm going to put, uh, let's say, 13 items into there. I'll put, I've only put items into one of the droppers for the time being. Press a button, and I should end up with, hopefully, 13 items in my inventory. There you go, exactly 13. And that works great. And as I said, it's uh, quite a bit smaller than my version. But if you do want to see my version, I will link the video at the end of this video. It'll be one of the two which show on the screen. So take a look at that if you want. Okay, so we're going to deal with those pesky slices that need one or two items or two pulses to be output. Well, the key thing is I want the input to look the same and I want the output to look the same. So in reality, these torches here are my output. Um, we, we have to be using them to, to power some, some droppers, but these are the outputs. So uh, they're all off at the moment because they've been turned off by these torches underneath. So that's kind of my basic starting position. And then we need to uh, find a way of basically creating one or two pulses. And like I said, there's lots of ways of doing it. Here's one that uh, I'm going to go with. I'm going to put some repeaters behind these observers, a block on each of those, and then we can alternate between um, between powered rails and activator rails. So if we just use powered rails all along, the whole row of rails will power. But if we alternate between the two, then only one of them powers. And then watching those rails, we can use a, an observer like that. And that observer will turn off this torch, turn this one on, and that'll give a pulse output. So at the moment, that would give me one pulse. So let's give that a go, press this. And I get one item coming out. So if I want two, I can just turn this repeater up to three ticks. Press the button. And I get one, two items coming out. So that's how you'd adjust it if you want to slice, which needs one or two pulses. Obviously, that means that you can't uh, just adjust it by changing the number of items in the droppers. But it is pretty simple. And because it's uh, quite a lot more compact, I definitely think it's worth considering. So that's all I've got to show you today. Uh, I just want to say thank you again to Ligon Core for reaching out and for doing such a great build. And I hope you've all liked it. And definitely, you know, um, give your thanks to Ligon Core in the comments as well. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.